Welcome back, guys and girls, to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to learn about Kubernetes service. Let's start by looking at a life of a simple pod. So at this point, we know how to deploy pods with specific container images. Uh, so let's say we have two nodes. Uh, this is node one, this is another node. Uh, both have separate IP addresses. And the uh, first node, in this node, we are running a uh, web server pod. So basically this node is running uh, Nginx and each of these pods have separate IP addresses. And in this node, uh, we are running two pods which are running MySQL. Again, each pod has uh, different IP addresses. Uh, so pods in the same cluster can talk to each other, right? Uh, so one way this web server can talk to this uh, MySQL pods is using the IP address directly. But the life of a simple pod is mortal. This pod, which is running now with this IP address, uh, can go down, right? Uh, it can die. And then what's going to happen is the replica set will kick in uh, in case you deployed with replica set of two, and it's going to bring up another pod with the same container image. But the IP address of this new pod is going to be different than the one that died. So then if this Nginx pod was using IP address to reach to this MySQL pod, uh, it's kind of hanging now, right? Because uh, it doesn't know how to discover uh, this MySQL pod and no way to reach it. And let's go one more step. What if instead of a pod uh, crashing and burning, maybe the whole node dies, right? And then the connections to this node dies, the pod dies. So another node comes up, which is basically Amazon EC2 uh, with a new IP address. Uh, two new pods come up with two different IP addresses. So this uh, Nginx uh, pods have no way to uh, discover or reach these MySQL pods. So all of these uh, problems get solved by service. So what is a service? A service is an abstract way to expose an application running on a set of pods as a network service. Um, okay, that probably didn't make much sense. So let's try to understand in a simpler way. So instead of these Nginx pods uh, connecting to these MySQL pods using IP, they will connect to a construct called service. And this service will distribute traffic uh, to these backend pods. And each service has a name. Uh, it also has IP address. So let's say the name of this service is backend service and it distributes traffic uh, to these uh, two MySQL pods and the Nginx uh, pods can point to uh, this particular service with this name. Similarly, uh, maybe from internet, uh, users can point to a service uh, the name of this service, let's say, is front-end service, and this service can route traffic to these web server pods. And the beauty of this service is, let's say traffic goes up, uh, or an existing pod goes down, uh, and a new pod spins up, this service is automatically going to discover this pod and start balancing traffic to this pod. Even if another node comes up, uh, and a new pod spin up for this MySQL, this service is going to discover these pods and start distributing traffic to these two pods as well. So how does it do it, right? How does it uh, discover the pods and uh, know that it has to manage it? So when you define a service, uh, you have to give a label selector. Uh, so you basically have to say, hey, manage any pods where the label is app colon front end. And then let's say there are five pods running and three of those pods have this label app colon front end. Since this label matches, this service knows that, okay, I have to uh, distribute the traffic to these specific pods. Also, this service keeps track of any new pod that comes up with this label and it automatically adds it to the pods that it's managing and start distributing traffic to it. So let's think about it for a second. Uh, forget Kubernetes. Let's say you are in a regular AWS 
and you have a bunch of EC2s and you have to have a mechanism to distribute traffic to those uh, EC2s. What service do you use to do that? Pause the video and think if you need. Yep, you guys and girls are right. Elastic load balancer. So you can think service as an elastic load balancer. Uh, it's literally one of the service types. So if you spin up a service on Kubernetes uh, running on AWS, which is basically EKS, uh, and you spin up a service of type load balancer, this will basically uh, spin up a elastic load balancer. So besides load balancer, there are two other types of service, cluster IP and node port. Uh, I'm gonna go through them. But for now, uh, let's stick with the load balancer type of service and let's try to understand how the manifest files looks like. Okay, so uh, this is our regular uh, deployment file, uh, which uh, creates a deployment with the name frontend deployment. And then uh, it spins up containers with image nginx and it will have a label app frontend. Uh, now, this is what the service manifest looks like. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, so the kind is service and this under spec, this type load balancer says what kind of service it is. Uh, so if you say load balancer, it's literally gonna spin up a elastic load balancer in AWS. And the selector of app colon front end said, hey, Mr. Service, discover and distribute traffic to any pods which has label app front end. So even if you create a pod outside of this deployment with this label, this load balancer service is going to discover that pod and start distributing traffic to it. So if we literally run this, uh, what's going to happen is uh, first it's going to create two pods of Nginx uh, because the replicas are two. Uh, each of them will have the label app colon front end. Uh, and then uh, this elastic load balancer will come up uh, that with label selector app front end and it's going to start distributing traffic to it. So let's say you change this replica from two to three, or maybe another deployment uh, creates another pod, or maybe one of these pod goes down and another pod comes up with this label app front end. And this service, uh, since it's managing the label selector of app colon front end, is gonna discover this pod and start distributing traffic to it. Pretty neat. So this service is used extensively in Kubernetes uh, either in EKS or Google Cloud or Azure um, because you barely expose any pod using its IP address. There will always be a service in between. Okay, so now that we understand uh, the basic concepts of service and how the manifest file look like for load balancer, let's learn about the other different kinds of service. Okay, so uh, there are three kinds of service. A cluster IP, node port, and load balancer. We got a sneak peek into load balancer when we are going uh, over service concepts. Okay, so uh, let's start with uh, cluster IP. So one thing to remember that motto of all service types, doesn't matter whether it's cluster IP or node port or load balancer, uh, they all do the common job of discover and distributing traffic across underlying pods. And how do they do it? They do it using a label selector. Okay, with that in mind, uh, let's jump into our first type of service, which is a cluster IP. Uh, so this is the default kind of service. Uh, so if you uh, define a service in the manifest, but don't mention any type, uh, then the type will be cluster IP. As the name suggests, it's only accessible uh, from within the cluster. So if you are outside of the cluster and you want to access the service, you cannot do it. Uh, so in this architecture where we have the front end web server, and then maybe we have this database, uh, and then uh, this service, uh, which is talking to the back end, and the traffic is coming from the web server, uh, which is inside the cluster, uh, will be well suited uh, for cluster IP. Okay, let's take a look at a, a cluster IP manifest file. Uh, so as you can see, there is no type field. Uh, so if you don't specify a type in the service uh, manifest file, it's gonna create a cluster IP. Uh, that's the default one. 
Uh, and then when we go over the manifest file for node port and load balancer, you will see you have to explicitly define a service type. And then a couple of things, let's go through the selector. Uh, the selector says app colon app dash server. So basically uh, any pod uh, with this label, this uh, service is gonna discover and distribute traffic across those. Uh, let's go to the deployment manifest file. Uh, you can see the template has this labels field with app, app server and the containers, uh, it's creating Nginx container. Coming back to the service YAML file, the port 80 under the ports uh, mean that other pods, if you look at the diagram on the right, other pods will use port 80 to access uh, this service. And the container port uh, for this container means uh, this container is accepting traffic on uh, port 80. Coming back to the service uh, YAML, you also see the protocol is TCP. Uh, you actually don't have to define it. I'm just showing it uh, for an example. Uh, by default, this is TCP. Uh, if you want to use uh, other protocols uh, other than TCP, uh, then you can uh, put it here. But if you want to use TCP, which is the most commonly used protocol, uh, you can uh, remove this field and it will work as TCP. Uh, okay, pretty straightforward. Uh, so now let's move into the other service types. Now, next one is a node port. So this one is little uh, complex. So let's dive deep on this one. Uh, so node port uh, class service is accessible from outside cluster uh, and it creates cluster wide port. So what happens is, let's say we have a service and then this service is distributing traffic across uh, these two pods and these two pods are running in a node, right? And the IP address of the node is 10.16.10.01. So what this node port service can do is, you can pick a, a node port between 30,000 and 32,767. So let's say for example, we picked node port as 32,000. And then the combination of this node IP and the node port can access uh, the pods from outside the cluster or inside. Uh, so what would it look like? So if you type in HTTPS colon slash slash 10.16.10.01 colon 32,000. So basically the IP of the node and then the node port, uh, you can reach to the pods from outside the cluster. So how does the node port uh, manifest file uh, look like? So on the left, we have the service manifest file, uh, which is uh, deploying a kind of service type is node port. Uh, and then it has three different ports. So I wanted to talk about uh, this thing. Uh, but let's look at the deployment file first. Uh, so this is the deployment manifest. It's uh, provisioning a deployment. It's spinning up the containers uh, with the container Nginx. Uh, and then the label is app server. Now going back to the ports. Uh, so the node ports that's exposed to the external world is 32,000. Uh, so basically, you can type the node IP and the node port. Now, what's going to happen is uh, the actual service, the node port service uh, is actually running on port 80. And the node port service will also have an IP, uh, but that's not important in this concept. Uh, so when you type in this uh, IP and 32,000, the traffic will be redirected to the port 80 of this service. Uh, so that's what this port means on the manifest file for the service. And the target port means uh, it's going to forward the traffic to port 80 of the pod. So you have to make sure that you open up or you are accepting traffic on port 80 uh, for this pod. So if you look at the deployment manifest for the actual pod, uh, you can see we have the ports and container port is 80. Uh, so to redirect external traffic coming to node port, then this node port uh, redirects the traffic to port 80 of the actual service. And then from there, it redirects it to the target port, which is the port of the container or the pod. And you can see on the deployment, uh, it's running the Nginx and it's opening up or accepting traffic the con from the, on the container port 80. So interesting uh, question. Uh, so let's say 
you have the same pods running in two different nodes, right? Uh, node 1, which is 10.16.10.1, node 2, 10.18.10.1. Uh, and I have explicitly showed the labels, so you can see all these four pods uh, have the labels app colon front end. Label selector for the node port service is also app colon front end. So if you type in 10.16.10.1 colon 32,000, where would the traffic go? Will the traffic go to this node, which matches the IP address, or will the traffic go to this node? Well, actually, the traffic will get distributed across both nodes, uh, because this node port is exposed to all nodes in the cluster. So even though you just type in one node, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's going to send traffic to this 10.18.10.01 node as well. Okay, so which brings us to my favorite kind of service, uh, the spicy stuff, uh, load balancer. So this is cloud specific implementation uh, because load balancer in AWS is different than load balancer in Google Cloud or Azure. Uh, so this type of service is accessible from outside the cluster. And uh, for AWS implementation, uh, this is Elastic Load Balancer. Uh, and then it's going to distribute traffic. Again, any type of service, the ultimate goal of the service is distribute traffic across pods with matching labels. Uh, however, uh, since for AWS, the load balancer comes with a lot of other features, such as this has the load balancer has a DNS name, so you can reach the pods uh, with the DNS. Uh, it can have SSL, SSL termination. It can have uh, web application firewall integration. Uh, you have access logs, health checks, etc. And when you expose an application to outside world, uh, you actually use a type load balancer. A node port is barely used uh, to expose the application outside of the cluster uh, because you have to know the node IPs, the node IPs can change. So definitely uh, not that easy. All right, guys and girls, that is the video. If you like this video, please smash that like button and click subscribe. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.